In today's video, I'm going to talk about the seven Fujifilm lenses that I bought, tried, and didn't just quite like. And ultimately, I sold them off or gave them away. If you're curious to find out which lenses they were, stay tuned. What's up everyone, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, so far I've only been making videos and reviews about Fujifilm gear that I like and use for my own professional and personal work. But before I got to this final kit that I have right now, I tried a whole slew of Fujifilm lenses, seven of which I sold or gave away because they just didn't give me enough reason for me to hold on to them. And before I share what what these lenses are, I do want to preface things by saying none of these lenses were bad quality or poor performers. If anything, they're all outstanding lenses in their own right and I was actually able to get some pretty cool images with each and every one of them. But the truth is each photographer and videographer has their own style and preferences. And for me, these lenses just didn't fit mine in one way or another. So again, if you own any of these lenses, trust me, I am not bashing them. They just didn't fit my lifestyle and or my approach to photos and video. That's it, nothing more. Okay, with all that said, let's get into the list and this is actually in no particular order. So the first lens is the 10 to 24 millimeter f4 zoom lens. I initially purchased this lens for video work mainly for vlogging because of the wide angle and the versatility of the zoom. And while I like the wide angle perspective for vlogging, after a while it just it just got too heavy and it didn't quite work for my lifestyle. Remember at the time I had one toddler and now actually have two toddlers, so a 10 to 24 millimeter lens for vlogging with one hand while chasing around a lot of kids it just wasn't gonna work and at the same time I'm not really a fan of f4 lenses and while the OIS is nice for taking some still photos of things that don't really have any moving subjects I mainly shoot wedding portraiture portraits and documenting my family which are all having moving subjects or humans in them so because of that I had to let go of that because of the f4 and for that super heavy weight of that lens it's a bulky lens because it has really good image quality but again that wasn't for me. So the next lens is the 14mm f2.8. So I originally bought this lens to replace my 20mm 1.8 that I had on Nikon full frame. And I used this casually at the beginning for family documentation and all that kind of stuff. But when it came time to switch to Fujifilm for shooting my professional weddings and portraiture, I ended up ditching the 14mm 2.8 in lieu of the combo of the 12mm Rokinon f2 and the 16mm f1.4, which you guys all know is my favorite Fujifilm lens. Since I'm using my lenses for low light wedding photography most of the time, um, I just didn't want to have uh, the 2.8 aperture be a risk, especially on these APS-C bodies. The 16mm 1.4 is my go-to lens for any type of wide angle documentation, portraits, and things that I need autofocus. And then the 12mm f2 is basically for any ultra wide shots and just in case shots where I need a lot of wide angle perspective. So because of those two lenses, I didn't really have any need for the 14 millimeter f 2.8. All right, so the 18 to 55 kit lens, the one that's aperture f 2.8 to f 4. So initially I did not buy this lens as a kit when it came to getting my first mirrorless interchangeable lens Fujifilm camera, which was the X-T20. Then when I started doing vlogging and filming my kids, I bought this 18 to 55 because it had such great optical image stabilization as well as a very useful focal length range of 18 millimeter to 55. So I really like that overall package in a very small lens form factor with very solid optics. And you know, for me, the 18 to 55 was mostly a video centric lens for me and not really mainly for photos other than just time lapse shooting for my vlogs and B roll. But for photos, it still was pretty good. I just preferred shooting with the 1.4 or the F2 lenses just based on my personal photography style. Ultimately, the main reason why I ended up selling this lens was mostly because of financial reasons. Due to COVID. COVID-19, I had to slim down my kit, sell off some lenses just to pay some bills. And honestly, if I had enough money um, or kind of a job or an opportunity where I needed to do video work again, I would buy this lens again if I started having those types of, you know, video gigs. It is a great workhorse lens for Fuji videography. And in general, it's just a great staple lens to have. And if you're ever going to buy a Fujifilm camera body and you have the option to buy a kit and uh, it comes with the 18 to 55, I hands down recommend that you buy 
it that way because you're going to save a lot more money. It's one of those lenses where you really don't need to sell it unless, again, like me, um, you have a financial reason to. Okay, so the Fujifilm 23mm f2. Honestly, I forgot that I had this lens. The 23mm lens, or just the focal length in general, is a staple for documentary photography. Everyone pretty much agrees upon that, the 35mm full frame equivalent focal length. And I ended up selling it just because I wanted something smaller. I mean, the 23mm f2 is a small lens, but it does stick out just a little bit. So when paired with the X-T20, I thought that it would be better for a kind of like more pancake lens, and I ended up selling it in lieu of the 18mm f2, which is a lot smaller, and it's along the lines of my favorite focal length is the 28mm in full frame. That's kind of my go-to walk-around focal length is 28. And fast forward today, now that I own the Fujifilm X100V, I don't really feel the need to purchase another 23mm f2 at this point. So again, that's why I sold that one. Okay, so the Viltrox 23mm 1.4. So initially, I got this lens mainly as a review copy because I was approached by Viltrox to review the lens for a video. And what I found is that this lens is actually sharper than Fujifilm's 23mm 1.4 at the center, wide open. But the main difference that I found for me is that the 23mm 1.4 Fuji does focus closer. And for me and my photography style, close focus is essential and something I prefer. So despite the Viltrox having better sharpness and, you know, just the only negative was the kind of vignetting wide open, which I actually kind of like, and it had decent autofocus. If all other things are the same and one lens has better close focusing ability, I will always, well not always, I will usually pick that close focusing lens because that's just kind of what my photography style and preferences lie. And because of that, ultimately I gave it away for my Instagram giveaway contest in order to kind of build the audience and try to shoot for 10k swipe up for my Instagram. So also if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me on there so that I can get that 10k swipe up soon. All right, so the 20 27 millimeter 2.8. A lot of people really love this lens. I personally did not like it. I prefer wider lenses as walk around prime lenses. So at least a 23 or 18 millimeter in Fuji or a 28 or 35 millimeter equivalent in full frame. And this one coming in around like 40 millimeters was just a little too tight for my liking. And I didn't like that it had a 2.8 aperture, especially as a walk around lens, because when I'm doing walk around stuff, it typically has a lot of low light portions of it, especially when I go into a restaurant or out with my family and having both you know the focal length that I didn't prefer as well as the 2.8 that I didn't prefer as well as the fact that it doesn't have the aperture ring which is my main ergonomic like benefit that I like about Fujifilm cameras and lenses it just had a lot of factors going against it and just because it had a small size that wasn't the only thing that was going to let me keep that lens because I thought that the 18 millimeter f2 had the compromise of again the focal length that I like the f2 that I like and also still kind of small, but with the aperture ring. So that's why I picked the 18 millimeter F2, ended up selling the 27 millimeter F2.8. All right, so the Miticon 35 millimeter 0.95. Honestly, I got this lens because I wanted to recreate full frame shallow depth of field on a Fujifilm camera, and this lens did the job perfectly. It's pretty much the best shallow depth of field kind of experience and image quality that I ever got on Fujifilm, but I really just couldn't justify hanging on to it because frankly, I suck at manual focus when it comes to documentary work and those pressure situations that I use in professional gigs. It didn't make sense for me to go to a wedding or a portrait session and bring both the 35mm 1.4 for the autofocus and the 35 0.95 for, you know, like the more creative portraits. So instead of bringing both of them, I ended up selling, actually I didn't sell it, I gave it away to a lucky subscriber for my 10k milestone subscribership on YouTube. So that's what I did with that one. Okay, and lastly, the 35mm f2. So I got this lens in order to pair with my 18 millimeter f2 and it did a great job for a long time until I started shooting Fuji for professional wedding photography. I tried the 35 f2 for one wedding gig and for me I just really wanted to get the ISOs lower so I got the 35 millimeter 1.4 and the 35 millimeter 1.4 on Fuji is my preferred 35 millimeter lens on the Fujifilm system across the board. It's basically the 35 f2 was really sharp but I also 
like the closer focus ability of the 1.4 and for video work while the 35 f2 is going to be quieter i shoot video especially with the 1.4 lenses in manual focus just because i like to shoot that way for my working style so the noise doesn't even bother me and the speed or smoothness doesn't bother me either so the 35 millimeter f2 is pretty much just collecting dust while it was a great deal again it just sat there and i only mainly use it for video b-roll for some of my videos just because i had a spare lens around and the main reason that i sold the lens was because i sold it along with my 1855 as a kit to the person that bought it just again to raise money because of some financial hardship during covid19 and this pretty much wraps up all the lenses that i own and use for fujifilm everything else i own and use for either my personal work or my wedding photography which you can check out my gear videos link down below again i just wanted to say that all these lenses are great in their own right if you own one of them please do not take offense just because i do something different than you it doesn't mean what you're doing isn't right what's right for you is different than what's right for me let's just make sure that's clear so at this point i'm curious are there any fujifilm lenses that you think i should try considering that you all are pretty familiar with what my shooting style is you know what lenses i use for professional work and documentary and personal family photos as well as the lenses that i tried that didn't work out for me so let me know down in the comments what you recommend i try and i'll try to see if i can get some of those lenses to test out as always please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already i make a new fujifilm or photography video every week and if that's too long for you please head over to Instagram and follow me at at Photo for new tips, tricks, and tutorials throughout the week. That's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.